So um, with the adiabatic processes, it'll almost, uh, so the one piece, so the point of these named processes are, they always give one piece of information immediately, but by definition. Adiabatic necessarily means heat transfer is zero. So you just go straight to that, put in zero uh, for heat transfer, because that's what adiabatic means. And then for the remaining, remaining two quantities, you have to do a little more work. And, and there's a bit of a shortcut you can take with the adiabatic processes. So um, if you are trying to use the given information here and here to calculate work done, um, that's gonna be more work than you have to do. Because uh, for this, you do have to set up, you know, uh, amount of work done is P, D, V, and uh, both the pressure and volume are changing. So you do have to actually integrate. And basically the expression you'll be relying on is the adiabatic relationship, pressure times volume raised to uh, factor gamma is constant. And um, all that is, a lot of work, well, it is tedious work. And it's a work that you don't have to do if you remember this fact. First law of thermodynamics, that change in internal energy is related, heat transfer and the work done by the system. So the question already told you that heat transfer is zero. So in the case of adiabatic processes, the amount of uh, change in internal energy is directly related to the uh, work done by the system. And it's a so it's a matter of which of these two are easier to calculate directly. Change in internal energy relates directly to, oops, or equal to um, the D over three and KB change in um, temperature or I keep writing this, exp not three, D over two, D group freedom over two um, times, uh, imagining using ideal gas law again, that is change in pressure times volume. So, um, so in this question you see, and for this expression here, it's only the end points that matter. You don't care about what path the gas took for the amount of change in the internal energy. So um, it, the question does give you the end point in volume, starting and ending. And oh, and it doesn't um, give you the change in pressure. So you do need to use this to kind of figure out, okay, that's, um, you do need to figure out what the final pressure is. So this expression is gonna be a little bit unwieldy. But once you have that, then from that, you can get the work done without doing any integrals. So I think I'm gonna go that route. I'm gonna figure out the change in internal energy and whatever that is, I'm going to put minus of that for work. So, so it looks like um, what I need to do is, so I have V initial, it's 0 0.07 cubic meter. V final is 0 0.24 cubic meter. I have P initial. 260 kilopascal. It looks like I should find the P final first. And there I'm going to use this um, adiabatic relationship. So P initial, V initial raised to gamma is equal to P final, V final raised to gamma. So for P final, P final is P initial times initial the ratio of the two volumes raised to power gamma. And this is where you do have to memorize some things. Gamma, it comes from the ratio of, one way to express it is in terms of the uh, specific heat capacity under constant pressure over constant volume, that's one. There is actually another way to express it. You can express it in terms of the degree of freedom. In terms of degree of freedom, it's a D plus one over D. That's kind of how um, that works out when you work out these coefficients according to equipartition theorem. So I have a 
monatomic gas there, meaning these three. So we d plus, no, it should be d plus two, plus two. <laughs> I have monatomic gas there, which means these three. So here for this question, gamma is equal to uh, three plus three, three plus two, five divided by three. So that's gonna be gamma. So let me work out the numerical value for the final pressure and just to use the numerical value. I have initial pressure to 60 kilopascal times the ratio um, 0 0.07 divided by 0 0.24. Yeah, and I'm going to result in a smaller pressure. I think that's right. With the expanding volume, pressure should go down. Raised to power of five over three, the vector gamma. That gives me uh, 33.4 kilopascal. And if you compare this with uh, what answer you, what answer you would have gotten for, what answer you would have gotten for isothermal process, you should find that this pressure is a, a little bit less than what the I, isothermal process would have been. And that's because uh, temperature actually changes. That's kind of what we are getting at when we do this calculation. Now, finally, we do this. There's a change in temperature. So I think the easiest, quickest way to do this is to do pressure times volume uh, at the final and then do minus pressure times volume at the initial. So uh, I already have final pressure, so times the initial, uh, sorry, final volume, 0 0.24. And let me leave it at this unit right now. So when I calculate the number, it'll be in kilojoules that I'm gonna have to convert to, to joules because my pressure unit was kilopascal. So that's final product minus. And also just to spell it out, this is what I'm doing here. This is delta here. It, what it should mean is final pressure times final volume minus initial pressure times initial volume. It, this is the expression that's true in general. Uh, in the case of isobaric and isochoric processes, we are used to factor, factoring some things out and that's not true in general. Um, so I did a product first and then now I, have, uh, I already typed in minus and I have the initial pressure, 260 kilopascal, that's the unit I'm using, times the initial volume, 0 0.07 cubic meter. So that, um, yeah, negative, I think that's right. Um, because the gas is doing work as it expands, the internal energy should be going down. I need to do that times uh, D over two. So times three divided by two. So minus 15.3, kilojoules or minus 15,300 joules. So from our earlier discussion here, work done should be plus 15,300 joules. By the way, this plus is not necessary, this comma is not necessary, but I'm typing this in to illustrate that my open math will you know, <laughs> allow you to type in things that are not necessary because it knows to understand all this.